Hello, my name is Sergey Baranchikov, and in this video I'm talking about Keysight PCIe compliance test interface based on simulation in advanced design system. Compliance testing for high-speed digital standards involves a set of assessments and evaluations to ensure that electronic devices or components meet specific industry standards for high-speed data transmission. These tests verify if the devices adhere the established criteria ensuring interoperability and reliability in communication and data exchange, or high-speed digital standards such as USB, PCIe, HDMI, Ethernet and others have predefined technical specifications that devices must meet to function correctly within their respective ecosystems. Compliance testing involves running a series of tests to verify factors like signal integrity, electromagnetic compatibility, power consumption and protocol adherence. These tests typically involve using specialized equipment and procedures to assess the performance of devices under different operating conditions, such as varying voltages and data rates. Passing compliance tests confirms that the product meets the required standards, giving assurance to consumers and ensuring compatibility with other compliant devices within the same ecosystem. The work steps inside of Diocray box is a very generalized workflow for design and simulations. It starts with a chip development, then goes through packaging process including ball mat designs, moving into the system level where pre and post layout processes are involved. Simply, the compliance test with simulated waveforms, meaning no real measured waveforms, is called simulation-driven virtual compliance test. This can be applied even at pre-silicon level. Physical compliance testing is done with real measured data. Compliance workflow includes signal waveform acquisition, setup configurations, perform compliance tests, and generate test report. Keysight offers three types of compliance test flows. Live signal mode is used for hardware testing, where signals are acquired from the testing device through a Keysight oscilloscope and passed to compliance app software. Offline mode can be used for both hardware and simulating testing. It reads in the waveform files uh, that are generated either from hardware or simulation into compliance app and performs tests on them. Simulation-driven mode is used with ADS simulation only where ADS simulated waveform is passed to compliance app through the API and perform tests on those waveforms. It is the only mode which has both-way communication with the compliance app, which means the test result can be sent back to ADS for further analysis. This video is focused on simulation-driven mode. Our product for memory interconnect analysis Memory Designer already has a comprehensive simulation-driven compliance solutions for various memory interfaces. Now we expand the compliance solution to CERDES applications starting with PCIe in ADS 2024 Update 1 and USB 4 V2 in ADS 2024 Update 2. CEM, pronounced like CHEM, stands for Card Electromechanical Specification. ADS PCIe Compliance Probe interface includes simulation-driven compliance tests for PCIe Gen 4, 5, 6 and for data speed from 2.5 to 64 giga transactions per second. Overall, we have in total 800 plus tests for PCIe standards, including base transmitter tests, CHAM endpoint tests, CHAM root complex tests, TX preset tests, and reference clock tests. A PCI link connects root complex, aka RC, to an endpoint, aka EP, optional through a switch. Card electromechanical test is a requirement in electrical compliance for complete product, including components, endpoint bridge switch, uh, root complex, adding card or system. Different versions of CBB need to be used depends on the maximum supported data rate. Let's open the design workspace. Uh, so the first cell contains PCI Gen 5 CHAM endpoint compliance test. Here is how our uh, minimum maximum channel connection looks like. So we're using PCI Gen 5 reference channel uh, smart components. We have several choices, adding card, CBB, CLB boards, connector or package, and each with uh, specific losses. The second smart component is used to represent the ISI board with a little bit more losses. 
for Eden card we're using the sub circuit and uh, inside we can see the ISI uh, Pro Extracted PCB model. That's the sub circuit itself. And uh, if we open it or dive into it, we will see typical SI Pro Extracted sub uh, generated sub circuit. And uh, if we open the S4P uh, container, we will see uh, the actual data. Uh, and this tool, the S printer toolkit, there are several uh, tabs to check the uh, consistency of S parameters. So I want to briefly show you how I extracted the PCB model. Let's open one of the dummy designs I have. That's the four layer board uh, with some differential pairs and connectors. That straight stack up looks like that. We have four layers. One of the Mectron materials was used here as a dielectric. It's high performance material for high speed digital applications. Let's open ASI Pro. It's a modern 3D uh, environment for AM extraction. So we have uh, five differential pairs here routed differently on different layers and for analysis I'm using just a single one a single differential pair so it starts in the top layer and then through the via goes to some of the internal layers and it ends at the uh, connector pins through the via So in terms of options, I use frequency sweep up to 30 gigahertz with the automatic sweep type. I use one of our servers for distributed remote simulations with the two parallel jobs. And for results, let's open S parameters. I'm switching to mixed mode differential uh, mode. And here's our through losses. Let's make it more uh, readable. Disable data points, make line thicker. In uh, PCIe uh, standard, uh, the losses are specified at the uh, Nikus frequency, so for a uh, speed grade 16 gigabit per second, uh, it's gonna be 8 gigahertz. We have losses around 4 dB and uh, for 32 gigabit per second speed rate we have losses around 6 dB. With this step we can plot figure of merit compliance result, its return losses. All green here means it passes and doesn't exceed the limit line for PCIe 5 and uh, in the dead rate tab we can switch between 16 and 32 gigabit per second. And with this button we're generating the sub-circuit for usage at a higher uh, hierarchical level for our test bench. And again here's our s printer block. So let's look closer at the TXMI and RXMI models for transceiver and receiver. Uh, we're deploying the IBCMI uh, file for demonstration purposes. In the PRBS tab, we're defining the bitrate, which is 16 gigabit per second for this test. And as a bit file, um, we're specifying the bit pattern for 16 gigabit per second compliance test. Let's open it in the, the notepad and uh, as we can see it's a bunch of zeros and ones. In the AMI tab uh, we clearly can see that um, the algorithmic part includes the uh, TX de-emphasis uh, preset and it is defined uh, as a variable TX NLTB preset which is set to 4. Now let's open the RxAMI model part. Again, we're using uh, 
for demonstration purposes we're using the IBCMI file and in AMI tab we clearly can see that a CTLE adaptive equalizer is included here in the model. Now a few words about the USTX um, equalizer model. So it is based on FIR filter representation here as we can see and um, in this particular test we'll, we'll be using uh, the so-called uh, P4 preset with zero um, pre-shoot setting and a zero de-emphasis setting in, uh, given in DB which means uh, no pre-shoot and no de-emphasis at all. In order to collect the waveform for post-processing we need to place uh, the min a channel probe and max channel probe at certain um, points in the schematic in the channel and uh, in the measurements tab we can define um, or select the measurements typical figures of merit on or density for I and waveform uh, to capture the time domain signal in addition to min minimum channel probe and maximum channel probe just for for the purpose of plotting uh, we need to define the RX output probe uh, to capture the post-processed uh, waveform after the receiver. For channel sim, uh, we need to set the number of bits processed and uh, the mode, uh, which is bit by bit in this case. Also, the pair of TX and RX uh, parts should be defined for the simulation. So let's open the very special uh, component which is called PCI e compliance probe. That's a bridge between simulation in ADS and compliance uh, application in Infinium offline. So we're defining the uh, generation of PCI e, then set the environment, uh, defining the test points which are minimum and maximum channel probes with CHAM and point test checkbox uh, checked out. For the tests, um, we can switch on and off uh, certain tests for minimum and maximum channel. Now let's go to device definition tab. Uh, where we set the uh, speed grade and uh, uh, set the uh, different parameters like the reference clock, power level, S, R, I, S and the uh, signal quality preset and it's been discussed that uh, the preset chosen for this test is before without any equalization on the TX side then for a report, we're defining the PDF file name uh, and the test result will be saved there. So now let's finally run uh, the simulation with the compliance test. So ADS will finish uh, the simulation and waveform capturing first and then kick off the Infinium offline application start and the um, a PCIe Gen 5 compliance test app from within the Infinium offline. For the sake of time, the next part of the video will be given uh, with a speed up factor X20 so you can observe how Infinium offline works in the foreground. Before we open the PDF file generated by a compliance application, let's look into ADS result in data display. So before the channel at the TX output, the eye is fairly opened. At the RX input after the channel, uh, we can see the degradation caused by uh, channel effects. At the RX output, uh, there's indication of CTLE uh, algorithm work and uh, we can plot also the BR contours and bath tabs for time and voltage respectively. Once compliance tests uh, are done, let's open the report file and the result is pass. We can see all the actual values uh, with margins. So the margin is pretty good. 
Here we can look into template tests. Peak differential output voltage, I width. And um, we can also observe the details with more specific values. And also uh, the differential uh, I is captured here. And also some screenshots from uh, Infinium Offline compliance application. We have another test for uh, speed grade 32 gigabit per second. Let's open schematic. We can observe uh, the differences between the previous and the current test. Uh, so the bitrate is 32 gigabit per second. We're using another compliance pattern file. And in PCI compliance probe, the difference is in the device definition. So if we're uh, switching between 16 gigabit per second and 32 gigabit, um, CTLE equalization preset becomes available. We're choosing 12 dB. And we're saving the report to another file. So before opening the file, we're looking into data display. The AI before RX looks more degraded. After CTLE equalization, the AI looks more open than before, but still very narrow and much narrower than before, than for 16 gigabit per second. And the test report result shows fail. So for 32 gigabits per second, this channel doesn't work well. Hope you enjoyed the video. You can find more information at keysight.com. Like, subscribe and stay compliant.